And everybody, uh, I have something that I've been wanting to try out for a while, um, and I've got it all set up here. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But what it is is, in my industry, we always, with almost every system we sell, we like to sell universal remote controls because it makes the system so easy to use. It's one remote that controls everything, and it needs to be custom programmed, and they aren't cheap. And one thing that's been around for a while that, I has, that I've always come across but never had a chance to really thoroughly test is HDMI CEC, which stands for Consumer Electronics Control. And the idea is, is that through the HDMI cable that we use to connect our devices to each other and get the sound in the picture from the device to the TV, uh, they can also talk to each other and control each other. So if everything goes according to plan, you can use one remote uh, or the remote for the device you want to use and it can control your other devices. It can tell the device to wake up, turn to the right input, and then when you do volume up and down, control your surround sound receiver. When you do channel up and down, it controls the cable box, much like a universal remote would. And if it works like they intended it to, this could mean saving a lot of money on uh, universal remotes. Uh, so I'm going to test it out thoroughly and let me show you the setup. Alright, so this is kind of a crazy setup because I've just got this receiver that supports HDMI CEC and I've set it up rudimentarily, rudimentarily, in a rudimentary fashion on the uh, right speaker over there precariously perched. So let's not bump into it. So anyways, I've got the um, Vizio television and I've got my sources which include a Sony Blu-ray player up here at the top. That's a DirecTV satellite box. I've got a Roku 3 resting behind those things. Um, you already saw the uh, Marantz receiver perched up on the right speaker. And I've got all of my factory remote controls here. And what I've had to do in terms of preparation, um, everything is just connected with HDMI cables and then of course I've got my speakers plugged in and I've had to go into all the menu settings for each device and make sure that HDMI CEC is enabled. By default it usually is so shouldn't have to worry about that uh, when you're working with new product with the exception of the receiver I think that uh, the default for that is off so I had to turn that on. So anyhow, um, let's see how this works. All right, so I've done a little bit of testing and already come to some conclusions about um, how viable this is as a solution for avoiding getting a universal remote, and it's not quite as good as I hoped it would be. Uh, let me show you what's going on. It, it, it does make things easier, and to some extent, um, it does a lot of things that a universal remote would do. Um, let me show you what I mean. So I've got all my remotes here, <clears throat> and I've got my setup, which is currently off. Um, what I'm going to do is pick up my DirecTV remote, which has also been programmed to operate my Vizio television. And again, HDMI CEC is enabled on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the DirecTV box slash television. So you can see that the box came on, the Vizio television is coming on. I got my receiver over here. We'll give it just a moment. There goes the receiver turning on. And there it finally changed over to the cable sat input, which is where my direct TV box is connected. And right now I've got no picture on the television. Look, you can even see my Vizio TV is wondering what's going on. It says no signal. This happened a couple of times, and now it's happening for the demo. So let me show you what I've got to do to correct the problem. If I want to just continue using the same remote control, I have to then turn it off. So receiver off. The satellite receiver is off. The TV went off. There goes my surround sound receiver. Um, and then try again. So I'm going to power on. TV on, satellite receiver on. And we got video. 
Here comes the receiver. It's on the proper input, and I got picture, and I've got sound. And you can see that I'm going to adjust the volume down on the remote, and you can see the large bar at the bottom is the surround sound receiver. And in fact, while I'm adjusting the TV sound, you can see the volume raising and lowering on the surround sound receiver, which is exactly what we want. So basically, the TV's telling the uh, surround sound receiver that we want to raise and lower the volume. That's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do, which is cool. Um, now let's say I want to use the Roku. So I'm going to go and pick up my Roku remote. This is pretty sweet. Now watch this. So all I got to do is press any button on the Roku remote and it instantly changes over to the Roku menu. You can see here that the receiver has switched over to the Roku input because everything's running through the satellite or the surround sound receiver and to the TV just like we would set it up normally. Um, so here I can get into Netflix and get something playing. Now, one thing that I can't do, so now I'm just using my Roku remote, which is fine, but uh, the Roku does have volume buttons on the side there. Now one thing I cannot do when I go to raise and lower the volume, it doesn't know how to tell the satellite or surround sound receiver to change volume. So I still have to use another remote such as my DirecTV remote to adjust the volume. So there's an example where you can't use one remote for everything. You're still dependent on a couple of remotes. So now let's say I want to watch a Blu-ray movie. So I can pick up my Blu-ray remote and I can turn on the Blu-ray player and again does the same thing. There's You see the little light come on my Blu-ray player and the TV switches right over which is exactly what we want. because my receiver has switched over. Now, in this case, I've got a Sony uh, Blu-ray player, and this particular remote cannot be programmed to work anything other than um, a Sony television. So the volume up and down buttons are not going to do anything for me because I can't tell my Vizio television um, to raise and lower the volume in response to Sony commands. It's not doing anything. So, once again, I if I want to change the volume, I have to pick up another remote, like my DirecTV remote or something like that. Um, but it does, upon turning on the Blu-ray player, it tells the television to turn on, switch to the prop be on the proper input tells my surround sound receiver to turn on switch to the proper input so that's all good um, now let's say I'm all done um, I'm gonna turn off the blu-ray player one thing that this does not do that I thought it would is upon turning off the source you're using I expected that it would turn off the system it's not gonna do that unless the TV turns off the uh, rest of the system is not going to turn off and the blu-ray player did not was not able to tell the TV to turn off so it's just going to sit here on so what I got to do is I can pick up my direct TV remote which remember is programmed for the Vizio TV um, and when I hit off my receiver turn satellite receiver turns off TV turns off and you can see and I just heard a click my receivers off <clears throat> pretty cool except what's happening here it just turned on who knows why it got some kind of signal from the blu-ray player or something and uh, decided to stay on you can see that the TV is not on the blu-ray player 
and the satellite receiver are not on. Everything's off except for my surround sound receiver. This is an example of why we haven't used HDMI CEC in the custom home entertainment system business. It's fickle. So if you're going to use it, just remember you may have to do some on and off cycling. Uh, if something doesn't work the first time, you're gonna have to turn it off, turn it back on. Let's uh, let's just see if it wakes up the cable. So I'm gonna use my Direct TV remote. And go on. TV's on. Satellite receiver's on. Let's see what the. Uh... Now remember that was already on, and it did switch to the proper input. So that's all good. HDMI CEC everybody. What's the conclusion about HDMI CEC? Um, it's disappointing. I was really hoping that it was going to work, but it's too many inconsistencies. At some, I would press a button thinking it was going to do one thing, it wouldn't quite get there. I'd have to shut the whole system down, turn it back on in order for it to uh, come back. Um, you're, you're not down to one remote control, you're still messing with a few remote controls. It does do some things that universal remotes do, but you got to be prepared for some inconsistencies and some headaches. So until then, it looks like we'll still be using universal remotes in every system because Lord knows I don't want to have customers calling me with problems with their systems due to HDMI CEC. It's no wonder that even uh, cheap, cheaper universal remote companies like Logitech tell customers to disable it because it causes problems. So does some things, most things inconsistently. Uh, thumbs down.